So I'm here to do a quick demo of Robot Framework. Robot Framework is a test framework. It's analogous to fitness. Uh, as I was listening to questions about what's the difference between this framework and that framework, well, I didn't mean to start PowerPoint. There are actually no slides. Um, I wrote what I believe a framework is responsible for. The first thing is defining the format in which to express expectations. So if you're using fitness, that's going to be in a wiki. With robot framework, you can express your expectations in plain text files, either in natural language or in tables that are delimited as though it was like the wiki markup language, or you can create them in HTML files. Um, I believe that frameworks are responsible for creating the mechanism to hook into or drive the application. So if you're using FitNAS, you're creating your, your fixtures in um, typically Java, although there's also a Ruby port for FitNAS. And you could be calling, because it's just Java, you could be calling any library, whether that's Selenium RC or something else. Um, the framework is responsible for executing the tests. And we saw how FitNAS does this really cool thing where it actually updates the wiki page as you execute. So you're getting the results live in the page as you go. Robot Framework has a slightly different way of executing. So I want to show you just a really simple test with Robot Framework. And I'm using the Selenium plugin library. I should mention Robot Framework is open source. You can, um, it's at robotframework.org. It's hosted on Google code. Uh, and the Selenium stuff that I'm showing is their Selenium library plugin. One of the nice things about Robot Framework is that because it's got a very pluggable architecture, there's a whole lot of additional open source libraries that are being put out there for a variety of different interfaces. Out of the box, it ships with interfaces for stuff on the operating system level, like file operations. Um, with stuff for doing Telnet. It came out of work that was done at Nokia Siemens Networks. So not surprisingly, a lot of the original work that was done on it is geared towards telecommunications. But that does mean that Robot Framework is particularly nicely suited to any situation where you have a heterogeneous application where you have to drive the test automation through multiple different interfaces. Like you've got to go check this through telnetting into this device, and then you have to go check this thing on this web-based interface. You can do all of that very, very seamlessly with Robot Framework. Um, so going back to expressing your expectations, here we see a very, very simple test case that is using Selenium keywords that I am assuming are going to be familiar to most of you, inputting text into an element with ID triangle side one. We're going to input the value five, uh, input another value, input another value, get text out of the I thing that's got the ID triangle type, and then check to see if they should be equal. Um, that's a built-in robot framework keyword. And this maps to this user interface. This is the thing that we're testing. This is a little demo test thing that I've got up on my website that you can play with if you want to. And the way that it works is like if we were executing this test manually, it would look like this. And we'd see the type of triangle. So when we execute that same test case through Robot Framework, we get, make sure I execute the right one. Um, I can execute that on the, the command line, PyBot first triangle. We should see it pop up. And there, it's just running that same test. Now, the thing about Robot Framework being a keyword-driven framework is that we can refactor this test without actually having to go all the way to writing code. You can have keywords on top of keywords on top of keywords. It's keywords all the way down, kind of like turtles all the way down. Um, so if I were writing this for a production environment, I would never want to leave a test that looks like this, because this test does not express the essence of the thing that I'm checking. My colleague Dale Emery has a lovely paper on having tests express the essence of what the, the, the intention. Um, so the problem number one with this is it's not expressing the essence of the intention. I can't tell anything about the intended functionality from the way this is expressed. The second problem with this is that it's going to be a whole bunch of duplicated code when I'm testing a bunch of other triangles. So I'm much more likely to refactor it into something that looks like this 
where I've got tests like handles a simple equilateral, input values 1, 1, 1, handles a simple right triangle, input values 3, 4, 5. See how this is much more expressive of the intention, what the software is actually doing, and it also is much cleaner in terms of the amount of duplicated code. So if I execute these tests, we can see those tests run, um, and we'll also see one of them fail, and I've left it failing intentionally. Uh, let's see, triangle tests. So because this is just doing the typical Selenium stuff that you're used to, all the things that you're used to being able to do with X paths and so forth, you can do. If you got to the point where the Selenium library plugin for a robot framework didn't give you enough power, like if you have to do complex string manipulation, trying to do that in a keyword is really, really hard and not really recommended. At that point, I would want to move to Python. Robot Framework supports both Python and Java for writing libraries that extend the functionality. So in that sense, it's very much like fitness. But one of the powers is you don't have to go all the way to Python. So here we see the one that's failing. And it's failing because I did a regular expression match on the coordinates that were returned. And there was a negative number. And that should never happen. But the way that expectation is expressed in my test is verify triangle is drawn inside Canvas. So all I've done is to create a keyword that expresses the intent. And the definition of that keyword uses a regular expression against the coordinates that are reported on that user interface. Whoops. No, I didn't mean to launch Scrivener either. So you see how these say not a number. Um, that shouldn't happen either, actually. Uh, but if the, the particular case that fails is, let's see if I get this right, 5, 6, 2, I think. Yeah, there, it's going off the screen, and we've got a negative 11. Um, that's what's failing, and it's catching that failure not by doing a bitmap compare on the triangle, but instead by looking at the coordinates that are reported in the UI. So that's a like, really rapid fire explanation of what this framework is. Um, and I'm also well aware that we're at the end of the evening. So I'd like to stop talking at this point unless anyone has questions.